All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. My name is Kenya, and you are now tuned in to 40 Entrepreneur Drive. I'm not in my usual recording location, but that's okay. I um, just, just moved around just a little bit. Today, I have a special guest. If you guys uh, took a chance to check out the screensaver that I had going on, that was just a little clue into what's going on here. Um, I actually did a video like what a week and a half ago. I was boohooing, I was crying, I was so upset because I had this great opportunity to connect with somebody who is not only all about business and entrepreneurship and finance, but they are actually passing on that knowledge to the youth. They are instilling these valuable lessons and skills into the young people so that they will have these types of skills to grow up and be self-sustaining and be responsible citizens and stewards of their own money and possibly of their own business. So anyhow, I'm going to do a quick introduction here. And as soon as my guest is done, I'm going to be bringing him on. Thank you for everybody who has been patient with me. I know I've been talking about this for like two weeks. I dropped the ball. I made a huge, huge mistake. I, uh, I did a great interview. And after all of that, I looked over to the side and the record button had not been pushed. So let me just check the audio right now. Yeah, I can hear myself loud and clear. So it was it was great. It was wonderful. But you know what? We can't talk about what was. We can't talk about what could have been <laughs> because the moment is gone. But you know what? We're here right now. And I'm so happy that he was able to be gracious enough to talk to me again, patient enough. We got different schedules. Of course, I'm a I'm an aspiring entrepreneur, but he's actually doing the darn thing. He's a business owner. Hold on, let me get my notes here because there's a lot going on with him. And for him to take the time out to actually talk to me is really a huge thing because as a successful business owner, you know, you don't have a lot of time. Most of your time is there to build your business, sustain your business, grow your business, scale your business. And for him to take some time out to talk to me, not only once, but twice, um, and, you know, stay in contact with me multiple times by phone, I'm very, very, very... Um, humbled and grateful and thankful for that. So let me give some background information while he is getting ready to come on. We will be bringing him in live from his place of business. And thank you, Mr. Joe, for sharing that out. I really do appreciate that. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Average Joe PT. So you had a, you had a special guest to, um, today. I've got one too. So I'm going to do my intro here. And as soon as he's ready, as soon as I see him ready in the background, you guys can't see him, but I can see him. And as soon as I see that he's ready, I'm going to bring him on. But in the meantime, I'm going to give a little bit of background information. If you have children, whether they you know, are a teenager or young, the younger, the better. But if you have children, this would be a great person to connect with. He's on Facebook. He's got a website. He's got some online tools and resources for you. And if you want to, there's nothing wrong with college. College, college is great. But if you want to give your child that leg up and a little bit extra, either something extra in addition to or something to fall back on, this guy is the person that you want to connect with. So let me get over here to my notes and I will give you a little background information. And of course, this, if you guys have been following me for any amount of time, you know that I've done a video like this similar. It's called BOSS. This is my BOSS series. BOSS is an acronym that I, I think I like to, I like to think that I invented, but probably not. BOSS stands for Business Owner Spotlight Series and is talking, you know, to the average person who is either locally here in Fort Worth or someone that is a uh, what I like to call a YouTubepreneur, one of my YouTube uh, content creator brothers or sisters or someone that I know in some other way. And I'm bringing this knowledge to you guys because some of us are either already in the business or want to know about the business when we might be intimidated. I tell you guys about my experiences. It's not that much. And so I want to bring other people on to, to share their experiences and to share their expertise and their knowledge from different aspects of entrepreneurship and business ownership. Um, so my gentleman uh, guest, is, his name is Omar Finley. He, his business is out of Decatur, Georgia, just outside of Atlanta. He is a business owner. 
He is the founder of a special program, which I will let him go into the details of. He's the director of a special club, which I will let, you, let him go into the details of. And he's got a website and he's got some other contact information that's actually already in the description right now. So if you guys want to check that out now or later, you can do that. And if you can hear me, give me a wave. Let me know if you're ready. I was just doing a little bit of intro um, while I was waiting on. If you can hear me, let me know you're ready. You ready? Okay, he is ready. Okay, so I got a little bit of an intro. Let me let me do it. And I hope that this comes out as well as it did before, because I'm telling you guys, we was jamming. We was jamming. <laughs> and I looked over and I was like, oh, I cried, y'all. I cried. But you know what? That was then. This is now. And it starts right now. Hey, what's going on, family? Okay, make sure my audio is good. Audio is good. We are family. I'm so happy that we got together again. Okay, let me bring it down. Let me bring it down. That's my morning Bible party energy. I need to bring it down and focus. So, yes, ladies and gentlemen, this is the guest that I've been talking about. We're going to make it really quick. Matter of fact, because I do respect your time, I'm going to set a timer. You let me know what we got, and I'm going to go, go through those questions that we already did go through. But of course, they didn't get to hear it. So I'm going to make sure that I capitalize and optimize on this time. Uh, is 30 minutes good or is that pushing? Yeah, let's go. Let's, let's get it done. Absolutely. Okay. And ladies and gentlemen, when this timer goes off, it's a done deal. You guys can put your questions in the chat. Um, if we don't get to answer them right now, leave them in the comment section. You can forward them to me. I'll try to answer them to the best of my ability or his contact information is in the description already. So let's move it on. Let me get these questions up. So as I already said, um, this is Mr. Omar Finley. He is the owner of a business, uh, well, like multiple businesses, but he's the business owner of a retail outlet called the Listening Tree Boutique. If you were here at the start of the live stream, there was a little screensaver going on. That is actually from his website. That is in the description. He's the founder of a young entrepreneurs program facility. Uh, he is the founder of Young Entrepreneurs Program, which is a program um, for a workshop for young people. And the curriculum is based around entrepreneurship and finance. He's also the director of a book club called the B-Boys and B-Girls, which is a part of that. Um, he's also an author. He is an author of a book called A World of Our Own, The Beginning. Uh, he's an, excuse me, he's an educator, he's an entrepreneur, and what I would like to consider a social media influencer. And without further ado, let me let him say a little bit more about himself. You got the floor, sir. Let's do this. I see the red button. It's on. We live. We live, huh? Live. <laughs> Hallelujah. We live. Hey, on, family. Hey, listen. Listen, family. I'm I guess uh I'm Omar Finley, like she said. I'm the owner of the Listening Tree Bookstore. We are a children's bookstore committed to black authorship. We we teach entrepreneurship through our young entrepreneurs program. Which, which teaches children ages eight to 12 and ages 13 to 18 how to own and operate their own business. Uh, we go through a curriculum. We actually have a 10 week curriculum that has outcomes like uh, the children have an LLC, they have uh, a website and they have a payment portal when it's all said and done. So when they finish our course, they actually have the tools to apply uh, entrepreneurship if you will and so and so that's the that's the most important thing is that they can go and do transactions uh and like i said that's 8 to 12 and 13 to 18. now we also have a book club as you can see right behind me what you see over and over again is our books uh we we've been in business now for five years this december and we're growing, we're growing. in our in our inventory uh tremendously so if you look back, we have a book club. The children get a book and a newsletter every month. And it's ages zero, it's ages newborn, right on up to 16. And uh, they're, getting a, they're getting a book and a newsletter every month. And they also have access to our virtual meetup, which is private, but very much like Facebook. And they're able to network from a very young age. And they're all readers. And they're talking about the books that they're reading. And of course, we keep control of the books and the fact that we do a review on every book to be sure that it's good for our children. 
because a lot, a lot of books out there that people promote uh, that's only good for other communities and not good for the black community. And I think it's I think it's very, very bad to do that. But that's been happening for years and we're changing that. And so that's who we are. We are the listening tree. Uh, and if I were to say, you know, I, I'll just say that my background is engineering. And so that's it. We are. This is the Listening Tree, children's bookstore committed to black authorship, and we're always ready. We're always ready to make sure that our children are getting a proper education that empowers them to leave a legacy for their future. All right. Let's get that back up like the way we had it. I was so smooth with it last time. I gotta get my smooth. I gotta get my smooth uh, mm -hmm. mojo bag. Okay, now I'm gonna thank you very much for that introduction. I'm gonna go very quickly through the questions, which we pretty much already um, had covered the last time. I want to get a little bit of background information, which you did touch on it, and then we're gonna go on through like your um, your business model, things that. Um, brought you to this point and what you've got going on for the future. So you are, let me go over your contact information really quick in case you guys have not looked at the description yet. His website that you can find um, this, what we just talked about, about uh, at is the listening tree books.com listening tree books.com. That is the website. Uh, there is an email inquiry at listeningbooks.com. You can also follow him on Instagram at the listening tree. He is actually on Facebook as well. Facebook.com, the listening tree book teak book teak. And then he's also on Twitter, uh, the listening tree. I don't know if I asked you this before or not last time. Do you have a company mission or model that looks like an empty slot that I didn't either answer or maybe I glossed over? What is your company mission or model? Absolutely. Our mission is to perpetuate a love of literacy and learning in our global community. In what stage would you consider your business? Startup, growing, scaling, maintenance? Uh, at the moment, we are scaling. Uh, we, 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 figured out, we figured out who our customer is, uh, and we're serving our customer and scaling our business to you know, to, to satisfy our customer and even and even bring in more as we as we listen to what the world needs and wants. All right. Specifically, uh, though, specifically, we pay we pay attention to our community, to the black community. And I think we I don't remember if I got this answer from you before or not. I know you teach the children about the importance of LLC. And I don't remember if you went into the details of yours, but as far as your structure, are you, I think we did cover this sole proprietorship, LLC, S Corp. And yeah. if you choose to go into the details, why did you spe um, choose your specific business structure? Okay. So, so we are, we are a limited liability corporation. I chose that initially just to protect myself, just in case anything went wrong. Um, you know, when businesses fail, you don't want your personal, um, the state to be attacked by anyone or anything, right? And so that's why I chose an LLC initially. Uh, after being in business now five years, we understand that we're going to move over to what's called an S corporation. And what that what that will do for us is it, it's just going to help us in the tax on our tax forms. Um, you know, when it's time to when it's really time to uh, file for taxes. I'm only going to be charged once um, um, on the company, company company name, and I don't know. And so, and so that's the that that's the re the reasons why we chose LLC initially, is specifically to protect ourselves personally. Uh, it's important. It's important, uh, guys. If people are listening, want to be entrepreneurs, make sure that you do that part first. Get your LLC. And then set up your own uh, uh, business bank account because those two things, those two things now separate you from your business. And should anything go wrong with your business, then your own personal effects and your own personal state is not in danger at all. And you've been doing this for, I think you told me, is like four or five years or right around that time. How long have you been doing the re either the retail part where you're actually uh, selling this information, selling this literature or the education part? How long have you been doing this? 
Uh, I've been, I guess I've been at it now about, about uh, a total of maybe seven years. Uh, uh, we, my wife and I wrote the book, A World of Our Own, the beginning about seven years ago. And back in 2014, and we, we, we sold, I guess we sold a thousand copies pretty quick. And that helped us understand that there was a serious need for books that 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 showed that showed uh, uh, the black community, black children in the right light. And so the book that we wrote was about the first seven days of creation, and that's because we looked for a lot of books about faith for our children, and we just couldn't find their images. We we found almost all white images when it came to spirituality, and so we say, you know what? Here's an opportunity where we can where we can create a book for our children. We ended up writing four books. We published we published two. One is actually in print, and that's called The World of Our Own, The Beginning. The one that you should look out for soon is called The World of Our Own, Noah the Righteous. Uh, and then we've, got, then we've got another coming out right after that. That'll be called uh, World of Our Own, uh, The Four Courageous Hebrews. And so, um, we 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 take we're taking the time to control the information that's actually going out to our children, and so 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 once we did that about seven years ago, we decided to open up the listening tree a couple years later, and that's now been five years ago. So right about seven years ago, uh, we got real serious about making sure that we were a part of educating our community and controlling the information that goes out. Okay, I had I had that uh, book there up on the screen. The, the book that I showed on the screen, that's book number one. That's the first one, right? That's right. That's, okay. that's the first one. That's the one That's the one that blew up right away. We didn't do anything. We just, we just put it online and everybody bought it. So... Uh, I, you know, supply and demand is everything when you start talking about this. Okay. So six to seven years, and you did touch on the fact that you started off doing engineering. I remember we had a huge discussion about that. I'm going to try to make it as compact as, as, as possible. No, don't, don't and, uh, just start to, it's okay. Take your time. I feel, like, I feel like I need to zoom through this because I'm telling you the way I felt after that large, phenomenal interview, I was like, I just wasted like 45 minutes of this man's time. You guys just don't know when you are a business owner, time is of the essence. Time is a premium. There's nothing more important than time because you can always make money, but you can't get time back. At least that's how I feel. So I'm always like, oh, time, time, time. Now you're absolutely right. <laughs> Yeah, All right, let's, let's mosey on down this list then. I'm going to try to uh, make sure that I cover everything. So you started thinking about business when you did go <laughs> off to college, <laughs> went to go to college with the aim to go into a profession, a career, yeah. but when was this entrepreneurship spirit seed started in you? Honestly, it started when I was seven. Uh, my mother took me to, uh, you know, we were, we were doing school shopping. And, you know, I'll be honest with you, I've always wondered why we, we could go to a store and they had every product that you need and their lights were on, but we gave them the money. They gave us the product and they kept the money, but they always had the product. So they took the money and kept the money, but they just sat there and waited for us to bring it to them. And I wanted, I always said to myself, how do you do that? Like, how do you become that part of, of life? You know? And so I'll be honest, I've wondered that for as long as I can remember, for as long as I could think, <laughs> I've been wondering that. But but the real passion started when I was seven. My mom took me or my, my, my mother, my mama, right, took me to uh, she took me to where we go. We went to Foot Locker and Summit Place Mall uh, you know, in Waterford, Michigan. And and we were riding down. Uh, we were riding down Elizabeth Lake Road, passing by, passing by Mervyn's, and uh, and I said, and I, and, and I just at, uh, and what happened is I went in, I went in the Foot Locker, and I picked out about eight shoes, picked out about eight different pairs of shoes, tried them on. I looked her straight in the face. I was like, all right, Ma, let me get those right here, no problem. I was like, let me get all eight. I'm good, right? So. Uh, she gave me that look like mothers do 
you know, uh, she gave me that look and said, you know what, Omar, you can get two. And so I picked my two, but I still was wondering why I couldn't get all eight. So I knew I couldn't ask her right then. So I got my two pairs of shoes to go back to school. And we got back in the car. Like I told you, riding down Elizabeth Lake Road, passing Mervyn's. I asked her, I said, yo, Ma, why, why couldn't I get uh why couldn't I get all eight pairs of shoes? And she was like, Oh, my I only make a certain amount of money every day. And I said, What? She said, Yeah, I make a certain amount of money. And I said, Okay, you make a certain amount of money. So you're telling me you go to work all day, but you limited what you can buy. Like it, it didn't make sense to me. Like I was like, okay, so you spend the majority of your day at work. But you limited as to what you can buy. She said, yeah. She said, I make, she said, I make this amount of money per hour. So, you know, I always been a math mind. So I calculated it right quick, you know. And I was like, oh man, wow. You know, I said, that's still a lot of money, mama. You know what I'm saying? And uh, so after she told me that, I understood immediately. And then I, I understood immediately that that's what I didn't want to do. Uh, I knew I never wanted to work for anybody after she told me that. Uh, and then, and then, but what happened is I asked, I said, so Michael Jackson is doing everything he wants to do. He's singing, dancing, having a ball, and he loves what he's doing. And he's making millions of dollars. And so I was looking at Michael Jackson. And then I also was looking at Michael Jordan and Isaiah Thomas. And I realized, I said, you know what? I, I can dance like Michael Jackson, but I can't sing like Michael Jackson. But I, but I think I can ball. I think I could get my, my, my basketball skills up to NBA level. And that was the day I decided I wanted to go to the NBA. Literally. And so it's just, like, just like every other black child. You know? and, so, and so I just, I just knew that I didn't want to work for anybody from literally from age seven on. And I ended up having, I, I had a book route when I had a, uh, I had a, uh, a paper route when I was 11, uh, caddy, uh, from 13 to 15, you know, I worked at DJs and merry go round when I was 16, 17, I did everything I could to have my own money, but I could never stand that idea of having to answer to somebody and I'm still not getting paid as much money as I want to. I still got to ask them for how much money I get paid. That's the most irritating thing for me in life. That limitation. That limitation. Somebody, the limitation that somebody else puts on you. Yeah. Exactly. See somebody asking about the books. The, the, the information to the books is in the description already. If you're interested in any, I'm not putting in links of individual books, but if you go to the description, his contact information and the website, all that, all the social media links should already be in there. If you don't see it now, check after the live stream and you should be able to get access to those. Yeah. If they got a question, I can answer. It's OK. What right. is it? uh, just so you know, the books here, the difference between the listening tree and other bookstores is that we review every book in the store. Uh, we read every book from cover to cover. The children's books. There are some adult books that we that we review uh but 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 the adult books we sell specifically to adults so you know we leave adults to make their own decisions even though we do read the books so we do a full, we do a full review uh, so would you say that your mother was the most influential person um in you as far as wanting to do your own business or were, was there any other factors going on there absolutely i saw my mother so let me say it like this. I always, I, for some reason, I was always that child that wanted everything I saw, right? So you follow what I'm saying? Like, I really wanted it. And like, so, so for example, like I, if I wanted a pair of Jordans and my mother said, Omar, you can't get the Jordans, but you can get the other shoes. I would just say, I'm good. I don't want any shoes. Right. You were so I, right. If I couldn't get it, if I couldn't get it, I didn't want it. So she would always put it in layaway so that I could get it. For those of y'all don't know what layaway is, you put the product to the side and you pay on it until you're able to get it out. That's what layaway was. And I'm not sure too many stores do that anymore. But yeah, I haven't seen it in a while. Yeah. But but the bottom line is 
for me, if I couldn't get what I wanted, I just didn't want it. Right. I, I've never I've never been the type to settle for what I didn't want. Right. And so that was part of my motivation. But the second part of my motivation was the fact that I every single time I asked my mother for something, I saw her work her butt off just to get it. And so that kind of ached, that kind of ached inside of me because I really felt like, man, I need to be able to do this. I need to be able to, you know, take some take some uh, sweat off my mother. But I, I literally watched my mother go to work, have a second job and sell Avon and show up at every single sporting event that I've ever had. So, yeah. Uh, i am I saw my, it's absolutely my mother. Okay. She didn't miss anything. She showed up. Parent teacher right. conference. Yeah. She was there. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah. Let me get back to this list of questions. So, I uh, school, but you know, that's my mother. So, here's what, here's what I can tell you is she, she was absolutely the motivation for, you know, stepping out there on my own and really, really getting some things going while I was, while I was young and just trying to figure things out on my own, you know? I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. The first book, the first book that you had was faith-based. And I know we talked about that. Uh, we talked about that the last time too. Um, the importance of not just faith for yourself as an entrepreneur, as a father, as a husband, but as a business owner, like you're not hiding it. You're yeah. kind of putting it out on front street. How important is your faith to you as a business owner and to actually, I guess you would say promoting it because I mean, it's a faith-based book. Yeah. Some people might draw back from that and say, yeah, I don't want to mix, mix my faith with my money, but you're doing the opposite. Tell me why that's important to you. Well, well, I think, I think it's a bit, hypocritical to say you're not going to mix your faith with your money. Uh, and the reason why, the reason why I say that, and I don't want to be harsh. I'm, you know, I'm not trying to be harsh, but here's, here's what I say. God gave us all the tools that we have. We, we are the result of God's creation. And so uh, we've been, we've been sold a lie as black people that Faith has something. Faith is a uh, immediately when you think faith, you start, you know, people start thinking of forgiveness and people start thinking of uh, uh, prayer and I'm going to get down on my knees. But faith is actually the action that you take behind what you believe. And so and so here, here's the thing. It's when you say when you say how is my how do I do my faith? I think every person wakes up every day with faith in something. Now, whether that faith be, uh, you know, in their job, in their husband, in their wife, in their children, in their business, they have faith in something that they're taking action toward. And the truth is the action that I put behind anything is my faith. So I don't think you can separate faith from what you do. I think that what you do, it proves your faith, right? So, so the scripture, the scripture says that uh, faith is the substance of things hopeful. So that's the thing. So, so if I'm hoping for something, that means I'm taking action before I have it. And so, I don't really know how to answer the question other than to say, absolutely, my faith, my faith, right? Our faith, those of us who get together and work together, we show proof over and over again of what we really desire. And like you see on my shirt, I got 2019 goals because that's what I was doing in 2019. And now I'm in 2021. So. I took a poll. I put a quick poll up on my uh, YouTube page because um, for since January 1st up until like 
January, from January 1st to June 1st, I was doing a daily Bible study, like as part of my channel, which the channel is about business and entrepreneurship. And uh, I actually did make the executive decision. I ended up making a splintering off and making a separate channel because I was at a point where I was like, am I putting people off of the entrepreneurship stuff? Am I not getting enough people that are uh, wanting the faith-based content? So I don't know if it's different because of the platform of it being, you know, a social media platform and you've got so many different audience, but I was, that's, that's the decision that I end up making. I've got my, this channel here, which yeah. is business and entrepreneurship now and then i've got for people who just want to come and read the bible you can come read me, me over here and i was i was curious as to what my viewers thought and i don't remember the percentages some people said if it's not related to the business leave it alone some people said don't hide it but don't mm -hmm. push it and other people said hey yeah. go off for it that's who you are so it was it was yeah. a little bit divided so 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 here's here's my here's my take on it i think i want to be a shining example of what i believe Right. Mm. I'll never I'll never press my belief on someone else, but I will walk my belief out whether you're in the room or not. I'm not going I'm not going to back up on what on what I believe just because you showed up. Can you say that, that again? Can, can you repeat that again? To me, that was a little bit profound, but yeah. so, I want to make sure everybody else hears that. So, so, so what I'm saying is I'm not going to back up on my faith and my belief just because someone else showed up i'm but not going politically I'm not, I'm not, politically so, to so if, I'm, if i'm walking out what, what i want to be is a shining example of what i believe and what that means is i'm true to who i am all day every day oh, and i'm not going to switch it up i don't care whose room i'm in that's exactly why i became a business owner is because i want control of my life You're i want to be able to walk out my belief i believe in god Right. I have no problem saying it. That's why we wrote the book. Right. I believe that. And, and I'll be honest with you. It's not just a belief. It's a knowing. You tell me who can go and create a seed and put it in the ground and make a tree grow. I'll wait. You follow me? But here's, here's the point is regardless of what anybody else thinks, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be who I am. And in being who I am, I'm going to do what God called me to do. And what God called me to do is the business that I'm doing today. So so there's no separation. There is, would you consider that your purpose or would you call that something else? I would call it my purpose. Absolutely. But but I will never what I will never do because of what I don't like it myself. I would never push it on anyone else. I'll always be exactly who I am and pray that who I am. Would attract them to, my, to 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 the walk that I walk. Mm. You see what I'm saying? I, 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 I don't want to. I don't want to force you to anything. But here's what I'll do. I'll have a bookstore that's committed to black authorship for the for the specific purpose of growing black children to a mature place where they own and operate businesses and where they actually own and control their own community. So that when they have relationships with other communities who are different races, they actually have the power and the leverage to do to do business. Right. They, they leverage their work now so that they so, so that we now can have a relationship outside of the community so that it's not a master slave relationship. And it's an eye to eye relationship. And so that's what I'll do every single day with no fear, because God is on my side. I hear you. I hear you. Uh, before I go on to the next question, I had one person asking, and you can ask answer this question um, while I look up that next question. Do you have some children books directed to little boys? Absolutely. <laughs> you serious? <laughs> See. And thank you for that question, Nicole. Thank you for that question. There's Swift Walker, right? Journey around the world. Right? Journey around the ocean. Right? There's Swift Walker, a continental journey. So Swift Walker is going all the way around the world through the ocean, and he's even going to go to space. There's Swift Walker. Swift Walker. Walker. I like that name. Right? Uh, here's one for here's one for boys and girls, but the star of the show is a, is a boy. 
Uh, his name is Demarcus Jones and the solar calendar. And he's going to take a trip through history. This is a chapter book. This is a six part uh, series. Uh, hey, anybody remember 44? All right. Oh, the president, he looks like me. I wonder yeah, how many yeah. people really said that. They were just like, what? Yeah. That means I can do this too. <laughs> you see, here's a, here's a cool one. How many times have you ever, ever seen a, a black child talk about being a tech genius, right? Mm -hmm. There you go. Hey, I'm in tech, I'm an engineer, right? That's so, uh, STEM and STEAM, right? Science, yeah. technology, engineering, and math. And yeah. then STEAM, they added the science, art. Because, engineering, art, and math. Yeah, because the, the art is how you really get it done. But there's EXO, right? As in exoskeleton. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's book one. That's book two, if you can see it. And you guys, make sure you check out the description box. I put it in there before we started. You can go back in there and uh, go straight to the website. There's book three. Let me show you book four, and then I'm done. And there's book four. Mm -hmm. Right? Well, we not, but it's not actually open because Malika. It's part of the same saga. Malika Warrior Queen. That's a lady. Yeah. Right? So I know I know we, 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 we got some good work happening in the community. I don't know if you guys heard me while I was off the screen, but I was saying the, the, the links that's 20 minutes already. Or 30 minutes already. The links are, should already be in the description. If not, as soon as I get off the live, I'll make sure that, I, that they're on there. But let me give you guys real quick. This is the website, so you can look this up yourself. I'm going to try to be smooth with it. I was so smooth with it last time. <laughs> All right. Absolutely. This is the website, listeningtreebooks.com listeningtreebooks.com and tell me oh give me the backstory of that because you broke that down last time and I didn't realize something was um, the listening part the listening part listening uh, so 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 listening tree is based in the, in our African tradition of sitting under the baobab tree and learning and learning orally through, the, through that tradition. And so that's actually what we do here. If you look to my right, I can, let me see if I can kind of get it going. Let's see if I can make this work. How about that Grio? So I remember you about that Grio. You see, do you see the tree behind me there, just there? We sit, we sit in that chair right there and we read to the children. And if you look behind me, if you just look on the floor, what you see is we sit in the grass, just like we, just as if we were sitting outside, and we sit on what's called the listening path, uh, and we read to the children. Uh, what's through something called meet the author? We actually bring the author in to read to the children, and so the name, the listening tree, is done in that spirit, so that we're always maturing our children in the oral tradition, whether and that and that would be teaching, right? So, so we're raising the children. We're not just we're not just telling the children to go read, go away, go and do this. No, we're we're paying attention to the information that comes in, the information we put out, and we're also paying attention to how our children mature and what they need. So, I would say that we are a child centric store, right? Child centric, specifically our children in the black community, and so and specifically so that we can have a proper representation going out to the world of our children because many people put black black faces in their stories but they never put it they never put it they they, they rarely ever put it in a light that empowers the black child it usually makes the black child a uh, sidekick the token. Mm. Mm. let me go into some of the deep dive as far as your business management you being the owner uh you what 
what is my question here? You are a part of your business's everyday operations, correct? Yes. Uh, and I think we touched on, do you contract out work as needed? And then you can segue that into hiring family too, as far as, you know, should we, should we not? Because I kind of have my own opinion about that, but you made me see the light. Yeah, so, we, so, so yes, yes, we do. We do contract work out. Uh, I mean, I think I think that's a good idea when you're when you're a small business because you can't, you know, you just don't have you just don't have money laying around to pay people by the hour. Uh, so we do. Yes, we do contract work out. But uh, I think the question that you were asking is. Before you, family, before you go to the family one, why not just do it all yourself? Because I feel like most people think that being an entrepreneur means I'm the boss. I'm doing it all. It's all on me. Why not just do it all by yourself? <laughs> Did I make a joke? <laughs> it is pretty funny, ain't it? <laughs> yeah. I don't know how many person that thought that. I'm, I got a business, so it's all on me. <laughs> That is partly true, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so if you look inside of the store here, honestly, if you want to go into to YouTube and type in the listening tree, you'll see I did lay down the floor. I did put up these walls, the walls behind me. I built those walls. That office, I built that. You can go on YouTube and see the progression of what it did look like before I put the work in to make it look this way. So, yes, I did all of that. Right, okay. But after you set the after you set the platform the way that you want it, uh, you gotta maintain it and you wanna be using your bandwidth to make money. And so it's better it's better to pay somebody five dollars and go make twenty. Okay. So you you have to you have to have enough sense to understand that. So 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 what that means is as a business owner. Once you establish, once you establish your investment, the most important thing now is that you understand your margin and keep it growing. Mm, yeah, because you can't be everywhere at once, and there's only so many hours in a day, and you can only you can only um, you can only do so much. I read this book. I can't remember the name of it. I got it downloaded on the Kindle. Uh, I think it's actually written by a Jewish rabbi. And he was talking about the importance of what you just said. But he, he said it differently. I can't remember the name of the book. If I can remember it, you guys, I'll put that in the description too. If you know it, you can let me know. But it's basically biblical biblical foundations uh, to be you know, a successful business person. And everybody has their expertise and specialties for a reason. Like yeah. you... You pay somebody to cut your grass because they specialize in cutting grass. Cut it. <laughs> that's what they make their living. And while they're cutting their grass, you can be running your business. Yes, you can change your oil in your tire and your and your uh, oil in your tire, oil in your car, or your chase tires. But there are people who specialize that, and you can be doing what you do best while they do what they do best. I, when I find that title, I'm going to put it in the description. But I love it. I love. It. I love it. So, so the way that, the way that the way that I would put it, real simple, would be would be to say that you only have 24 hours in a day. And if you spend a whole lot of time doing things that you're not good at, you probably won't make any money. That's, that's, really, that's really the bottom line. And so if you do the things that you're good at, you probably will make money. But you won't be good at everything. You see? And so that's where, that's where working with other people come in. Mm. Real quick, just so y'all can see, it's called Business Secrets from the Bible. I'll put that link in the description. You guys can check it out on your own. That's one of the books that I'm trying to work my way through. But uh, I just got that little bit. and I, it, I'm learning. I'm learning. I've been doing so much by myself for so long. I feel like this is the only way to do it. But that's not the, that's not the business mindset to do it. Um, let me get to this next set of questions. Oh, family. We were talking about family. Some people say don't hire family. Mm -mm, don't do it. What is your take on that? I say hire family. <laughs> I say bring family into the fold. Uh, and, it, and, 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 so, and so here's what I said before. Here, here's the real idea. You need to establish what needs to be done. And if family can do it, bring family first. Uh, now, if family can't do it, then you have to go somewhere else. But the work has to get done. Uh, 
And the bottom line is the reason why you bring family in is because family actually has your interests. The issue, our, our issue as a community has been that we've always been undercut, even though we do great work and we do all these wonderful things, we've always been undercut because we've had people working within our companies that never had our interests at heart. They always were in competition with us. And there's a larger community that would like us to fail because it's just business. And so, and so, and so at the end of the day, if you're able to bring family on, family nine times out of 10 won't double cross you because they've got, they've got some, some, some stake in the, in the success of the company. And so that's why I say, you know, bring in family as much as you can because family is easier to trust. And of course, when you look at banking, that's the first thing. Remember, they used to call banks bank and trust because you're not putting your money into a bank unless you trust them. And that's the thing. I'm not hiring you unless I trust you. And the easiest person for me to trust is family. Mm. We got one comment that says, but you got to be sure of each individual family member, just like you would for a regular job. He said that he said put family first, but if they can't do it, yeah. if they can't fulfill that task, if they can't yeah. be trusted, yeah. you already be given a family. Be willing to hire family and fire family. <laughs> Just be clear. As the, the bottom line is family still has to come in and do a good job just like anyone else would. And here's the thing. Once family understands that, family ends up doing a better job because they're not, you know, they're not trying to get away. And so I'm going to jump around a little bit, but I'm going to segue this question into speaking of family. Is this a family business? Are you going to be passing this on to your children? Yes. <laughs> yes. This is a family. <laughs> Why is that important? Why is That's that very easy? To huh? Why is that? Why is it important for them to inherit this rather than do something else? Well, like I said, for me, for me, I'm 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 usually frustrated at the fact that when you look at the black community, we've done all of the work for this world to look beautiful. And at the end of the day, we don't we don't own and control any of the work that we've done. So I'll be completely honest with you. Uh, you know, we've been taught a, a, a warped history. We've been taught that people did things that they didn't do. Uh, we, we end up learning that black people did things long after long after, you know, we get older and we're not able to pay attention to what what's important anymore. Uh, we, I do this because I want my children to actually have, have the opportunity to chase their own dreams. I need them to already have a platform to think. I don't need them to spend their, their years between 18 and 30 just trying to figure out how to take care of expenses. I don't want that. I want them thinking about buying assets now. And I want them thinking about what their purpose is so that when they go out to the world, they can actually be responsible and make billions, if not trillions of dollars. Mm -hmm. And have real control, real control that allows them to protect their assets and it by any means necessary. I had one question on my list that I wish I would have asked you last time. Um, I don't know how much you know about it, but you can answer it or we can go on to the next one. Speaking of assets and children becoming financially responsible, do you know what the green light debit card is and how do you feel about it? I made a video about it. I'm like, mm -mm, that's not for kids, but I might be looking at it from a wrong angle. Do you know what the green light debit card is? Yeah. <laughs> what, what is your take? Uh, so, so I don't have a specific opinion. I think it's a I really do think it's a good idea. Uh, I think it's to, I think I think that our world is controlled by transactions uh, and everything we do is transactional. So if children can understand transactions earlier, that is a plus because mm -hmm. because now now they understand what power really is. And they understand how to operate in it. So, so, and they also understand both sides of the transaction. It, one is a one is a receiver, and one is a giver. Right? The the one that while while you're handing your hand out, the other one is coming your way. So, 
they see that yin and yang kind of relationship that happens, that up and down, that in and out, that 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 balance of life, that 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 duality that always is there. And I think I think that when they just stay at home and play video games and stuff like that, they develop a very one sided way of thinking. And so and so things like that really do help children, I think, to, to grow. So I don't have anything bad to say about the card. I don't have the card. But uh, we're working on a very similar uh, idea, but we want to control our money. So again, there's, there's, a, big, there's a big, if you, there's a big thing. So, so one part that we haven't talked about is my, our young entrepreneurs program. Is that our young entrepreneurs program is specifically set for for questions like what you just asked? Is to teach children how to operate in a world that really is controlled by business, right? And so even if they're working for someone, they actually understand the economics, they understand the relationships, they understand the different cultures, and they begin to, you know, uh, understand how to communicate with the whole world rather than just their community. If I think about it the way you explained it, maybe my discomfort, sense of discomfort with my child having this thing, this debit, this thing with money, maybe that speaks more to my discomfort with money and my, uh, you know, lack of confidence in managing money. And so I'm like, well, if I can't manage it, maybe she can't either. So that's something for me to think about. I might have to make a follow up video on that. But my first thing was, I guess I was thinking, why would you give a credit card to a child? But it's not a credit card. It is a debit card. It is what you are putting into it and you are managing it. So it's, I have to maybe undo some, some, some previous thinking that I have about money. So let's so let's dig into that right quick, uh, Kenya, just real quick, because I think I can I think I can speak to it. Uh, I think simply, you follow me? Uh, because we were taught to only worry about expenses, money feels very uncomfortable. Okay, when you look at, when you look at it, right? It always feels like it's leaving, doesn't it? Right, yeah. and so expenses are a result of your liabilities, okay? And so, so, so we're talking financial literacy, right? So mm -hmm. expenses are a result of your liabilities. They never feel good because they drain you, okay? But now you also have a, what's called an asset column, which we never, almost never focus on, right? Most people are taught to spend their whole lives focused on working hard to pay for expenses. And not having a whole lot of what's called cash flow left over or spending all the cash flow on even more liabilities. And so if you if you if you spend a whole lot of time buying assets and seeing your money make money, then you quickly want your children to learn it, too, because you need years to amass wealth. Does that make sense? Compound interest. Yep. Compound interest, right? So, so, so that's what I'm getting at is, I can act, I can actually understand why that's uncomfortable for you, right? Because it was uncomfortable for me, and I bet you it's uncomfortable for millions of other people. Mm -hmm. But the only reason is because we should be focused on buying assets and letting those assets produce income for us, so that we can have a little fun on those liabilities that we frivolously spend on, that we frivolously spend our hard work money on. Uh, year after year, which really should be working for you. Should be working for you, not just you working for it. I hear you. Exactly. I hear you. Um, so for those of you who do not know, who may have just come in, I am speaking with Mr. Omar Finley out of Decatur or Atlanta, or, or are they that close? Uh, yeah, you can say Atlanta. Uh, we're, we're in Decatur, uh, it's, it's, but it's part of the metro Atlanta area. OK, he is the business owner of the uh, bookstore called the Listening Tree Book Teak. The description, uh, the information is in the description box. He's also the founder of the Young Entrepreneurs Program, which I don't think we've touched on very. No, we did slightly. But let me let me get a quick, quick overview of that, along with me letting you guys know that he is an author. The books are available on the website that is in the description and all of the social media information should be in the description as soon as he gives us a quick 
uh, rounding out of what that program does specifically. If you're just now coming in, um, I'll let you hear that. And then we're going to talk a little bit more about the importance of social media, social media. All right. Our Young Entrepreneurs Program, uh, we teach children ages 8 to 12 and 13 to 18 uh, a curriculum that includes uh, financial literacy, identifying self-interest, which is specifically designed to help them understand the difference between themselves and others. Uh, and then uh, the uh, there we, we teach them how to uh, set up their website. And after setting up the website, uh, we, we connect what's called the payment portal and they're able to actually do transactions. So we, we have a we have what that would be sort of an intermediate hit. It's the beginner class and we continue with them so that after after they actually build their business, we actually promote them to our our B-Boys and B-Girls book club, as well as the parents, as well as as well as listening tree customers. So we are getting behind our young entrepreneurs and helping them put money into their bank accounts. And you were talking about before the important, well, when I say before, I mean the last interview, the importance of them being very active in that B-Boys and B-Girls uh, program. Why do they need to participate in that? What is the function of that? The which the young entrepreneurs or, or b boys book club. I think you told me like that was pretty much step one. Like if you need, if you cannot show me that you can read this information, then you. Yeah. I mean, you didn't say it that way, but it was kind of like if you can't read the information, if you're not going to dedicate yourself to reading, then yeah. you know you can't go to the next step. You said something like that. So 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 so, so here's what I say. If so 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 there's a most times people people don't understand investment, right? Most times people will buy a pair of Jordans before they spend money on 12 books. But the truth is the same amount of, the same amount of books that, that you can spend the same amount of money on information and spend some time with your child and they'll be able to buy so, as many Jordans as they want to. Uh, it won't, it's not a big deal. But what, I was, what I'm saying is our Young Entrepreneurs Program, there's a cost to it, right? And our Young Entrepreneurs Program uh, is, is there's a six is sixty dollars per class, and when they're done, they're going to be making a whole lot more money than that. Okay, but so we have results of it. But now, as far as our book club goes, our book club is twenty five dollars a month, and you get a book and a newsletter every month. And we deal with the exact same things that we do in our Young Entrepreneurs Program, but it's it's at a slower pace so that they can start to think about it. But it's also at a pace that, that allows them now to determine whether or not they're ready to go into a course That's where, we're gonna, where we're actually, we're not just teaching, but we are applying, right? So, so, so we spend half the course teaching, but then the other half, we're actually implementing everything that we talked about. And so it's very, it's a very quick one, two, three. They're in business. They've learned a lot. Now it's time to apply what you've learned. Now do it. Just do it. Yeah. Yeah. And that and what that does is that forces them to learn, right? That the learning is in the doing. Right. What I did when I what I did when what I do when I sit here and talk to you, you hear me, but you don't know what I know yet. Right. And I'm not saying you can you, right. if you follow what I'm saying. Right. Right. But when but when we step out here and go do these things, now we get the experience and that experience is it's everything. It's connection. Yeah. It, it makes the connection for those of us who learn that way, because yeah. some people do learn by just listening to you and then just running with. It. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so we all got different ways of learning. And that the one universal way of learning is doing. Doing. All right. I'm going to try to hit the speed round with all these questions here. I've got the importance of social media. You can be found on social media, which is different from your personal social media. The importance of having uh, social media presence, separate emails, separate phone line, separate account. Why can't somebody just start without having all that dedicated uh, presence? Why? What's the importance of that? Because you're going to get confused. <laughs> it's kind of like 
it's kind of like uh, you 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 want to get to a specific location, you got to go down the right road, right? You don't want to go down every road at the same time, right? So, so 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 basically, what I guess what I'm trying to say is that what you have is when you separate everything out, you can see very clearly. Uh, what you what you need to be doing. So, for example, you have a separate bank account. You have a separate email. Uh, you have you have maybe two separate bank accounts. Uh, but everything is set so that your money has a destination, so that your emails have a destination, so that when people reach out to you, they can reach out specifically to the right phone number, the right email, you know, and that they don't miss you. I had this I had this situation that happened one time. And it really hurt. And I'm going to tell you, because because it, it hurt me bad, because I had a school that reached out to me to do their book fair. OK, and we, we've been doing book fairs the whole time we've been open as well. But they wanted us to do book fair. And I have an email address that's, that's called Omar at listening tree I've never advertised it on anybody's platform. OK. Because I've always liked the Gmail setup because Gmail does a great, again, you know, you talk about people helping you. Gmail really does a good job of having an organized way to do email, right? It's not necessarily Outlook, right? So it's like Outlook for people who don't have Outlook, okay? Yeah, and, so, and so I like Gmail. So I never, I never promoted that particular email. But because that email was in, in process, right, it was in play. They sent it to that email and I didn't check it for like three days. And by the time, by the time I got back to them, they had already set up a scholastic uh, book fair. And so I was hurt, but that was my fault. That was my fault. If I have an email, if I have an email out there, that means I had to check my email every single day. That's my fault. And so I was hurt. I was crushed. Yeah. But I had to pick my face up. I had, to, I, had to, I had to own it. Right. And I had to make sure that going forward that I was fully and totally organized and paying attention to all of these different different spaces of communication, different places of communication that I need when I'm talking to people. Organization, organization of things. Organization of time, so much organization is vital to the success of the small business person. Uh, we talked about last time, if there was, there's only 24 hours in a day, but if there was a magical wand that I could that use to make one extra hour in the day, which would add up to, what did I say? One extra hour a day is seven extra hours a week. That's 28 extra hours a month, which is equivalent to one day and four hours. What would you do with that extra time? I spend it all with my family. Oh, a hundred percent of it. <laughs> That's where I would be. Spend time with my wife and children and uh, just find ways to, you know, raise them, have a good time with my wife and, you know, just find ways to have fun with the family. Uh, you know, it, it, if, it's, if it's teaching, if it's eating dinner, if it's just watching television, but just doing something, I would be doing something. I would use that hour with my family and doing something that really, it really helps our family grow. All right. Any uh, advice in particular that you would give to new people starting out in business? Yes. Yes. Uh, just starting out in business. Number one thing I'll tell you is make sure that you have a business name. Make sure that your, your name is unique uh, and that you do what's called a name search. And then and then go get yourself an LLC and get yourself a separate bank account. Do those things before you even before you do anything else. Uh, and then what I would tell you is don't do anything else after that except for go get your first customer. Mm. Don't, don't waste don't waste time thinking. Go do. I oh my goodness, I've got I have, we, we you know, back I have, back a, here. have a I have a I have a series that I do personally when I go run where I say welcome to go. What that is, when I say welcome to go, is literally that. Stop hesitating and do what you know you're supposed to be doing. I mean that for every person in the world, because I know that there's a small voice speaking to you, telling you, 
every single day what you should be doing, and you're overthinking it every time. Stop overthinking. You know better. You know you can do it. You know it ain't nothing stopping you. But the thoughts in between your ears, go do it. And it don't matter what it comes out of it, because what you learn by doing is so valuable. Right. So so while everybody else is thinking about it and you're in action, they're still thinking. That means that you're getting the result that you need to learn. And so you're you're a day ahead, a week ahead, a month ahead, a year ahead. By the time they figure out how to get started, you have learned what you need to learn. And now you actually do a real work. I'm going to play devil's advocate. Now, wait, wait, wait. We don't want to jump. We don't want to jump ahead too much. Don't we want to make sure everything is perfect? Don't, no. don't we want to make sure everything is in place? Don't we, don't we want to make sure everything is, all the dot I's are dotted and the T's are crossed? Don't we want to make sure it is exactly laid out perfectly before we do anything? No, absolutely not. <laughs> make sure, now, make sure the quality of your product is good, right? Make sure that what you're selling is what you say it is. That, right. does, that does need to be spot on, dang, and perfect. Yeah. But but after that, if, if, if it's only about the work, it's only about the service or the good that you're selling. Yeah. So once you get once you get your service solid, once you get your product solid, go go and talk to people. People make business work. People buy from your business. People. And if you don't have enough, if you don't have enough business, go get more people. Don't overthink that. There are billions of people in the world. I guarantee you. That if you're doing something that's valuable to others, they're going to find a way to pay for it. Mm. I jokingly said that because I, I remember talking to a couple of business minded coworkers of mine that we talked about business. We talked and we talked and we talked and we talked and it just ended up being a lot of talk for the most part. I don't know if we called ourselves daydreaming or fantasizing or we just want to, you know, be careful, be cautious. But it ended up being just talk for some people. And, you know, years later, I'm not doing, you know, I'm not a billionaire, millionaire. I'm not even a thousandaire yet, but I'm yeah. doing it. I'm in the middle of it. I'm, I'm falling. I'm making mistakes and I'm learning from those mistakes and I'm learning what to do and what not to do. Some people, they just don't want to get to that point. They don't want to mess up. They don't want to make a fool of themselves. They don't want to lose money, which yeah. is part of it. You're going to lose money sometimes. Yeah. And some you people just don't want to get there. Hey, you got to lose to learn. So. You got to lose to learn. You know, a, uh, lot, a lot of people, a lot of people say that you fail. You know, we, I say it's a first attempt at learning. Right. So, mm -hmm. so it, it's just how you look at things. Life is in the doing. Whatever you do, whatever you do is what, you know, you get something back for. It. And so uh, I think I told you this. My my biggest my biggest thing that I would say is really like the secret to it all. It's a physics equation. Um, and and for me. For me, it's everything. I, I can't tell you how chemistry, physics, and thermodynamics really helped me understand what to do in the in a real sense. Okay, y'all pay attention here. Here we go. Y'all um, pay attention. So, 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 so uh, here's what I'll tell you: here we is go. that force times distance equals work. So, what that literally means is that work is a measure of force. Work is a measure of force and distance. And distance is only a result of the force that you put in. So, so when, you, when you put that all together, then you understand that the only thing that you really control is the force behind what you're doing. So if you put force behind something for a day, for a week, for a month, you can now go measure whether or not you've done work, right? But you have to put in force right so the force that you put behind something is really it's really what it's really the only thing that you can control at the end of the day though you go sit down and measure how much work you've done and that's that's the that's the beauty of physics for me right that's the beauty of that that simple equation i would say that's like the holy grail because force is what you can control right and you can start to create your own equation based on you right i've heard people say all the time i've heard i hear people say all the time you are enough and i absolutely agree with that i think that i think that god made you in a special way and i think that when you embrace who you are you now step out and do what you're supposed to be doing and now you can measure whether or not what you're doing is worth it 
or not, right? It, 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 and then, so now what happens is you always can see clear that the force you put behind something, it gets a distance. That distance times the force now tells you how much work you've done. And most of the time you can measure that in dollars. Like that part. Yeah. P.O. Box, UPS store, or something else as far as business mail? Uh, I would do a P.O. Box. Uh, I wouldn't do my home address. Uh, it's, just a, it's just a bunch of crazy people out there. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, I would I would use a P.O. Box first and then, you know, wait until I got a real, a real office, right? Uh, and then if you got a real office, then, you know, send it there. But set that up, right? Uh, specifically where I'm at now, it used to be all one address. I actually had to go and create this address uh, down with uh, the city of Decatur. Mm -hmm. How do you bounce back from failure? I don't know if I asked that one or not. Dust yourself off. Dust yourself off and do it again. <laughs> okay. That's the truth. Look, yeah, look, let me tell you something. You're going to fail a million times, right? But the, the, the failure is when you don't learn from your fault. Uh, the, the, it, that, that, that's not a big deal. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's what you're calling failure. If you're saying that you didn't achieve what you planned on achieving, well, that's good. None of us do. <laughs> I think some people think that's the definition. I didn't do what I said I was going to do. I am a failure. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, you're not a failure. You just, you just didn't get there today. Do it again tomorrow. You might I like make it. Like <laughs> uh, favorite favorite form that's place to visit. Awesome. Get in action. You just got to get in action and stay in action. Uh, favorite form place to visit. Wow. I, I think you asked. I think you answered that one before. Yeah. Or that you want to go or have gone. I think you did say it. I remember what you said too. Yeah. So. Has it changed? <laughs> <laughs> so for me, my most, the most, the funnest place I've ever been is Aruba. Um, I had, a, I had an absolute ball in Aruba. Um, I couldn't, I, I, there, there's a, it was just, it was just flat out fun. The people that I was with, um, you know, what we did, we did, you know, we went and found out the history of the place. And, we did four wheelers and we ate food and we, you know, danced on the beach, and ate fish on the beach. We did all kinds of stuff in Aruba. Nice. That was, it was just real nice. And uh, so I really enjoyed Aruba. And I'll be honest, I, I really like the food in Japan. <laughs> oh, I can't wait. I can't wait. I had to put my, my plane trip on, on hold. I was supposed to go in August, but yeah. they're, they're going to hold it to the, the they're going to hold yeah. it for me. I just have to reschedule. We were supposed to be going this August, but uh, we're going to go. Like you just said, it's not that we didn't go. It's just we haven't gone yet. So that's yeah. it. We just haven't but gone will, yet. But I will say this is I haven't had the opportunity to make it to the continent, to uh, to Africa. Uh, I want to see I want to see the writing on the wall in Cairo. Mm. Uh, that's that's one of my biggest dreams is just to go spend some time on the African continent. And just, just, just be, you know, be among, be among folks that look like me, feel like me, um, and and at the same time, go and get, go and get that that basis of history that mm -hmm. is, um, less long before, this long before the slave trade. And so, mm -hmm. I'm really looking forward to spending some time in, um, in Cairo, uh, in, uh, uh, in Ghana. And in uh, uh, doing some time in uh, South Africa, uh, and I, I also there was one more that I wanted to go to, but I want to see I want to see the continent. You know, I want to really experience the people, uh, and I have a I have a serious drive to do that. I want to go and enjoy it for a decent amount of time, maybe maybe three to four weeks. I want to stay. Nice. Last book that you've read. <laughs> Seriously, have you read another book since the last time we talked? Last book that you've read and book recommend book recommendation for someone. I have a feeling he's a heavy reader. I have a feeling. 
I just have a feeling. He's a he's a bookstore owner. He teaches children to read for financial literacy and business uh, education. So I have a feeling he is a heavy reader. So last two books I read was XO. You see that? XO part four, The Legend of Wale Williams. That was one of the last books that I read. Uh, great book. It's a, uh, it's a graphic novel. Uh, you know, people who like comic books, beautiful, beautiful stories inside. Uh, so, and I, I know what, I know what that question is about. So I, I'm going to tell you, right. But I also read, uh, this one here is called one of our newest, Iyanu. Uh, read that one. Uh, also, Black Fortunes. Uh, this is an incredible book. Um, this is one of the one of the most one of the. <laughs> I did that one. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's outstanding. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, and it's not highly circulated. So I got mine so from the this, library. Yeah. So this is this is a great book to read. Uh, that I would tell you. Yeah, I just just finished that one, <laughs> and I got a customer that asked for this one. And so I'm currently in the process of reading it, but since it's a, like I told you, since it's an adult book, we went ahead and put it put it on on sale. But this is one that I'm checking out now, and I've I've sat down and, and read and listened to uh, uh, Ijeoma Aluo, right? Ijeoma Aluo, uh, and I think I think it's great great information, uh, and I think her her thinking seems to be quite balanced. So, Black Fortunes is the last book that I read. Just, okay. just to be clear, just to make sure that you know, Black right. Fortunes is the last book that I read. And if you want to get it, log on to the Listening Tree. It'll be available in the morning. I hadn't made it available because it went out to our book club, and our book club gets books before. Just I didn't tell you guys that our book club actually gets books before we put them into circulation. So, book club gets it first. And then we sell it to the rest of the world. Vern's Junk Closet is in the chat saying she wanted to know the name of that first book that you held up. He had uh, Black uh, Fortunes, and you said, what is the name of that first XL. book? XO, The Legend of Wally Williams. You can get it right here. Just go to listeningtreebooks.com. It's a four-part series. Vern's Closet, check out the description in this live stream. It should already be hey, in there hey, for how to that. contact him and the website. And you can so get go to, to that, Go to that first page, uh, Kenya. Go to the first page and scroll down. Go to the first page of the website, scroll down. You'll see uh, this book is actually featured on the front page. So hit the Listening Tree uh, logo. Yeah. And then just scroll down and you'll see it. But this is EXO. So that's the first book right there. I think that's I got too many tabs open. That's let's, keep going. let's keep going down. Oh, yep, yep, there yep. Is right? And so I see that, right? That's book one. Right? And this is book two. Okay? That's book three. And the one that you saw initially, that's actually book four. So it's, it's book four in a four-part series. It's constantly growing. Uh, it's the unique universe. Very, it's, it's uh, you know, you have Marvel Universe. Unique universe is a whole universe of different superheroes. Mm -hmm. And and that you have men and women, and they, it's based on. Uh, it comes out of. Um, it's got a lot. Got a lot of West African history in it. Uh, real good. Real good stuff. All right. Do not laugh. Try not to laugh too hard when I ask you these final questions. But uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> that's the funniest well, thing that's happened to you lately. I read every day. Yeah, he, he does. <laughs> what? What? Everybody should read every day, whether it's the newspaper. And look, somebody told me I read every day. <laughs> you have to read a little bit, but we're talking about. 
reading. Um, as a matter of fact, I talked about that in my Bible study this morning because I made a reference to something else. And there's something that happens with your eyes. I said, I don't remember which book it was in, but I remember what part of the page it was on. And I was able to find it like that because I have a physical book in my hand. I have a relationship with you know what's going on here. I said, I know what part of the page and I only had to go back a few pages before I could do that, before I could find it. You can't do that with a phone. You don't have that type of relationship with a phone. I mean, digital reading is good. Don't get me wrong. I have my Kindle stuff, but there's something about reading, taking time to read that you, it, for me, it sticks a little bit more. Yeah. Um, so okay, yeah. we got the last now, thing. Before we on, one last thing I do want to say. Yes. Best book I've ever read, y'all. Uh, best book I've ever read to this day. I read it every year. Uh, once a year. Uh, it's called Destruction of Black Civilization by Chancellor Williams. You can also get that at the listening tree. We have it in hardback. That's a special edition. Uh, and it's a wonderful book. It really, it really deep it's a he spent 16 years getting firsthand information uh, uh, for, for our community. And Chancellor Williams was a true scholar in the truest sense of the word. And uh, and that's a book that I would tell everybody, you want to read it. You want to take some time and read it. It's, it's, a, it's not an easy read, but it is, it's a wonderful book to read. Mm, all right. Let's see. I think that last question was pretty much best advice, worst advice, and funniest thing that happened to you. I think we already know the funniest thing. It wasn't funny to me. It wasn't funny at all, but you were cracking up. But uh, <laughs> funniest because, thing that has happened to you. Yeah, well, you know, they asked, they asked about they asked about failure. You know, you, we, we deal with it every day. Boom, boom. Um, right. <laughs> And so, for y'all who don't know, we had this interview a week and a half ago. It was the bomb. And uh, I, because I was afraid, I was, you know, it was, it was a, partly my fault. I was afraid to go live because I have, I've got a couple of other boss interviews, but they're all pre-recorded. That's my thing. I like to edit. I like to make it look nice and squeaky clean, but um, I was afraid to go live. And so I tried to do it as a pre-recorded. I just never hit record. So yeah, that's, <laughs> that's what we're referring to here. Um, anything else that you would like to share or a positive so, note or so, mantra or, or prayer that you do often? often. Uh, so, so first thing, I'm going to answer your questions. Uh, uh, worst advice for me has always been, and it is for me, worst advice for me is when, when people give advice that I didn't ask for. Uh, that's the worst oh. kind. That's the worst kind of advice for me. Uh, and so I don't, I, I hate, I hate that, you know, I hate to see it that way, but I'll be completely honest that what happens a lot of times. And so let me say it like this. There have been many times in my life where, you know, I've tried to listen to what people said and I get down the road of what they said and I can't finish the thought because I didn't have the thought. It was their thought. Mm. So I'm not, trying, I'm not trying to be mean to that person. What I'm saying is, as far as completing things, I have to complete what God gave me, right? And every, everything outside of that, you know, for me is bad advice, okay? I, I hope that makes sense, okay? But the best advice I've ever received is what my mother told me. Every single time I wanted to quit, <laughs> every single time I felt like I failed. She would always say to me, she would always say, and she still says it today. She would say, Omar, this too shall pass. Right? This too shall pass. And that has always come true. That no matter how bad things feel, this too shall pass. So for the person who's dealing with failure, you're dealing with issues. Let me tell you something. Pick your face up, pull it together, because this too shall pass. And so I want to give my mother all the credit for that one, because that's the way I it a lot of the cheers. You know, this too shall pass. And it might feel bad right now, but trust me, you'll be stronger later. I promise. Stronger because of it. Yep. That's a fact. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh Funniest thing was, of course, the interview that we had <laughs> uh, where we where we talked and 
And I'm talking about we had a wonderful conversation like we're having right now. And uh, can you look? Can you call me back and said, "Oh my, I think I didn't. I think I didn't record it." I said, "Oh my god!" <laughs> so you were so good um, about it, though. I'm so, so happy for it. You know, I, I laughed because because I felt like we had a wonderful conversation, and I, I just believe that that was that was the precursor to today uh, to make today even better. And so I thought that that was really funny. Uh, and uh, I'm happy we did it to to be real with you. Uh, I am. And uh, it hurt my stomach for two days. I just want you to know it literally made my stomach ache for all that yeah. night, and I was just feeling sick for like two days. Yeah. But like you said, I had to pick my face off the floor. I had to pick my stomach off the floor, and I had to just like this yeah. not the last interview you're ever gonna do. Yeah, <laughs> so absolutely. Just go, go, go. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And uh, uh, prayer. My prayer, my, my daily prayer is that God be pleased with my actions of the day. Um, that's really it. I pray that I pray all I pray every day that God's will be done in our lives. Uh, myself, my family, my children. Uh, pray a prayer, prayer, a prayer, hedge of protection over our family. And I pray for I pray for, you know, issues that are happening in the world every day. Uh, and I pray that I can be a real impact to people uh, with the work that I do. I pray that what I'm doing is always relevant uh, and always on point as far as as far as uh, connecting with people and really and really influencing the world to be better. I pray. I pray that when I leave, I leave this world a better place. And so, uh, yeah, that's it. Mm -hmm. that's it right that wraps it up. That wraps it up. I don't think I see any more questions that have yet to be uh, answered. Oh, actually, I do have two more comments. What's going on here? I pray for all our Black community. That's what Burns Jump Closet says. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I just spoke on that. And then that was me repeating destruction of civilization. And yes, yeah, so let me wrap this up here by saying, if you are just now coming in, well, first of all, I encourage you to hit the replay because this is going to be, this yeah. is live, but this is going to be available for you guys to come back to. I have been speaking to uh, Mr. Omar Finley, who is the founder of the Young Entrepreneurs Program, owner of the book, Teak. Uh, called the Listening Tree Books. You need to look in the description box. It's in the description box. You can go straight there. He's also the facilitator of the B Boys and B Girls, B Boys and B Girl, blah, B Girls Book Club. I'm getting tongue tied now. The website is listeningtreebooks.com. Um, if you need to reach out to him, his email is inquiry at listeningtreebooks.com. Uh, his Instagram is the Listening Tree. Facebook is also. Facebook.com, the Listening Tree Book Teak. Twitter is also the Listening Tree. All of that is in the description. Yeah. Thank you guys for watching and or listening. Um, help other people to find this video and to find this gentleman by giving this video a thumbs up. Uh, leaving on top feedback, uh, on topic feedback, please in the comment section. Share it out to anybody who is who wants to empower themselves and to empower them chil their children to be financially responsible and to grow uh, that the seeds of confidence that you can be self-sustaining. If you want a job, that's fine. But if you want to work for yourself, this is how to do it. Um, share this out on your social media. Subscribe for more videos like this, more content like this. Follow me on Facebook at My Authority Fam. Follow him on Facebook at the information that I gave you guys and also for bonus materials. The only thing I have left, I've actually got a little clip that I'm waiting. I got it on pause. It's from your Facebook page. I'm going to play that right at the end. And you guys, is this the sound going out? Huh? Is the sound going out? I can hear you. Yeah. I hope you guys can hear me. As we're rounding this out, pretty much what I'm going to do is I am going to play a small clip. If you guys can hear me, let me know you guys can hear me. Cause he's having audio issues. Hopefully you guys can hear me. We're done. We're wrapping it up. I'm going to play a small clip from his Facebook, which you can follow in the description. And then I'm going to leave the website up for you guys to look at it at the end. It's just going to be a screensaver. I thank you all for coming and joining us. Thank you so much. 
uh, the Wiz, Vern's Junk Closet. Uh, let's see. I think I had Average Joe PT. I want to give a shout out to everybody that was in here, but I'll give that right at the end. Thank you, sir, for your time. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your understanding. Um, you, you're amazing. I appreciate that so much. And I, right, I hope you yeah, pray I that this it. video yeah. helps more people find you and what you're doing because I wish, I wish I had knew, known the stuff that you're teaching these young people when I was younger because I, I feel like I'm playing catch up right now. I feel like that age is 18 to 30. Well, I'm beyond the 30 and plus and I'm still trying to figure it out. But you know what? You're going to be a blessing to other people who are starting out right now. Thank you so much. So much. Thank you. Indeed. For being part of the Indeed. 40 fans. Indeed. Thanks for having me. Um, yeah, all right. Thank you so much. All right. Let's see. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is the long-awaited, well, it was a long-awaited for me. That was the long-awaited interview that I wanted to have my guests. Like I said, we talked with each other like a week and a half ago. Uh, failure, failure, it happens. It happens. I've been doing this YouTube thing for over a year now. I know what I'm doing, and somehow I made a huge mistake of, you know, not hitting record. Um, he was gracious enough to come back. I'm very happy for that. At the end of this, matter of fact, I'm going to show it right now. I'm going to do a screen share with you guys just to let you guys see the um, the Facebook page that he's got is, let's see. Let me see. Let me see. Do a quick screen share of this tab right here. Hopefully you guys can hear it. Where is it at? Application window? No, this one. Is it this one? Hold on. There we go. This is the Listening Tree Facebook page that I'm going to share with you guys. I've been having it on pause, and hopefully you guys can see that. Let me see. Here we go. Oh, let me get this out of here. You ever have uh, those moments where it's like there's too much stuff up on your screen? I'm not trying to do that. Yes, I'm trying to do this. No, I'm not trying to do that. Okay, you guys ready? Here we go. All right, so you see right here. That is the Facebook page that this comes from, The Listening Tree. All right. So thank you for everybody who came in um, and shared this moment with me. Share this video out. Share this video out so that more people will be uh, aware of his program. One thing I don't think he mentioned is that his program is online. It does not matter if you are in Georgia or not. Uh, you can you you and your children can be, participate in his program. Go to the website. You can sign up. It is all online. And right now, a lot of us are doing things um, either virtually, almost everything online, or in addition to supplementary. So yes, whether you are in the north or the south or the east or the west or right there in the state where he's at, you and your children can participate in that program. Um, just make sure you head over to that website so that you can get an over overview of what he is offering uh, with that program and as, along with the books. I'm getting tongue-tied at the end here because I'm so excited. And yes, thank you get again. Thank you guys again for uh, coming. I'm done. I'm done. I'm like, I'm like at the point where I'm just spent. I'm emotionally spent because I'm so happy that I was able to uh, touch bases with him again. Um, yeah, Alex, Billy, you're rounding us off. We are rounding it. We are just finishing it up. Thank you so much for joining me, Alex, Billy. We're done. But you know what? The beautiful thing about live streams, at least my live streams, is they they are available after the fact. So you can go back to the replay or you could probably scroll back and scrub back and start from the beginning. Phenomenal 
guest today. I don't know if you have children or not, but if you do have children and they might even minutely be interested in entrepreneurship and business. Um, the guest that I just had on, Mr. Omar Finley, he is a bookstore owner. He is an educator. He's an author. He's talking about teaching business, entrepreneurship, and financial skills to the youth. So please check that out. Been busy at work all day. I'm just coming in. I sure do thank you for coming. I do thank you for coming, but we've been on for about an hour and 40 minutes. This will be available on a replay here on 40 Entrepreneur Drive. I'm telling you guys, I'm so excited. I'm so excited that I didn't even do my intro. This is my little intro, which is now my outro. I'll see you guys next time. Welcome to the live stream. And now it's time for the Business Owners Spotlight Series. Yeah, that was supposed to be at the beginning. So that's how excited I was just to come on here. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching.